Someone, someone made a joke in the chat, Jeremy. If uh, if Pouncey was a frozen item, Jeremy would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, and I think I think that transitions to uh, another question I have. You, you obviously have a big influence on YouTube. You're, I would say, you know, you're one of the top three, four OG people in the finance space on YouTube. Um, and your strategy has been, especially over the past year, these stocks that are like a, a TTCF, Honest, Smile Direct Club, these types of stocks, and that's kind of been your core strategy, buying the dip on those because I think I've heard you say that. They have a low float there. People don't really get them right. They haven't done the digging of going to the targets and actually seeing the TTCF, the sort of consumer research that you've done. So when they hit, they're going to hit. Can you talk a little bit just in the macro economy we are right now, moving a little bit away from pound here? Why that strategy over like a strategy going big into like tech or the S&P or just going deeper into tech? Like why is that sort of the core focus of, of your investing strategy? Yeah, I would love to talk on that. By the way, I might need to come back on a future episode, guys, and just ask you a million because literally I could probably spend legit like several hours asking you guys Palantir questions that I think are super important. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, so in terms of me, usually I like to... If I'm going to make some bets, I usually like to make them on industries that I, I see like a massive growth in an industry, right? And so recently I've been making some uh, some bets in the plant-based food industry because I think the plant-based food industry is about to have a pretty epic next decade. Um, and so uh, two of the stocks I'm investing the heaviest in right now, one's TTCF and then the other is a company named Oakley. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that one. Um, but they make, you know, products that are basically going to kind of, you know, uh, replace a lot of the dairy industry. And as somebody that used to drink two to three gallons of milk a week, cow's milk, um, I've completely switched to Oatly and that was really powerful. And that was one of the reasons I started looking in the company and then it happened to be a beaten down dog stock and, you know, I put everything together. So that, that's like, that's, that's something I can see in the real world. I see more and more people around me starting to go toward vegan diets, either a hundred percent or at least testing it out. And so that's just one of those things that I'm like, I feel like that plant-based food movement is just going to get exponentially bigger over the next, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years. So that's why I've been placing a lot of chips there. Honest is just, uh, that's just a, you know, a random stock that I think is, is undervalued right now. It's not really a bet on an industry or anything like that, but Oatly, and, and Tattoo Chef, those are specific kind of bets in that industry. I also think Beyond Meat um, is attractive. I don't think it's as attractive as the other two, but I think that one uh, is, is a pretty attractive stock. So, um, but yeah, usually I'm, if I'm going to play some bets, I like to place them on an industry that I'm very confident is going to grow exponentially. And, you know, if we take it back to like Tesla, I was like, I was so convinced even in 2018, 2019, that I'm like, you know, I don't know if it's 10 years from now or 15 years from now, but I can't imagine somebody going to, buy a new vehicle in the year 2030 and them saying, give me the internal combustion engine. Give me that ice vehicle. Like I just, I can't even comprehend that. I'm like maybe in the used market, but for a new vehicle, is that really going to happen? And so, you know, I see a similar trend in plant-based food. I think it's going to take longer to play out because you're talking about, uh, you know, if you, I, I think, I think for some people, they're going to think the the move, if they're going to try to go to plant-based is going to be harder than it is. And what I found is it actually was pretty easy. And as somebody that uh, you know, since a, I was a child, you know, you ate meat with almost everything. Lunch, you ate bologna sandwich or ham sandwich or whatever. And dinner, you ate meat. You ate meat all the time. Breakfast, you ate sausage, bacon, stuff like that. It was so easy for me to actually get off. And so, but anyways, that, that that's kind of the bet in that. Um, I also, I've also invested in a couple actually marijuana stocks uh, recently over the last, you know, year or two, because I think federal legalization is coming down the pipe. I think the majority of uh, you know, Americans uh, would, would say we should legalize. Right. And so I think that's coming down the pipe. Um, and so there's a couple specific bets I made there. And one of those is, is planet 13, which is here in Vegas. I can drive by the store. I can see how busy it is, which is one of the, you know, back to what we were talking about earlier. It's like, you can see in the real world, man. It's and so interesting. I heard you got monster, right? Because you were working at a, at a convenience store and you saw people drinking monster and like a hundred percent. Yeah. Monster, um, was called Hanson's natural beverage back in the day. Uh, yeah. 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 And I, I would look, you know, I'd look at the data for how many cans we were selling, um, in monster, you know, like the regular flavor and even like the non sugar, those were the, some of the fastest moving products. And I would, you know, be working, it would be like 5.00 AM, 4.00 AM landscapers would be coming in just buying two monsters, two monsters, two monsters. And it's like, dude, you, you see this in front of your face and it's like, you got to start putting these things together. Um, so yeah, but, but anywho, uh, that, that's some, one of the things I like to bet on is, is industries I see that are, that have, um, you know, exponential growth in front of them. I think it just makes, 
I think it makes it easier than trying to bet on necessarily a winner in a shrinking space or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just want to add something to what you shared there. I, I'm not in any of those stocks, but I want to call something out. Amit, do you remember the other day when we were on a live stream? And I talked about. Oh, yeah. John, you might want off. to tell the story to people what you were thinking. Quick summary yeah. of the story. Yeah. So I'm gonna, 30 seconds, but then this actually really applies to Oatly. I, I take, to, because I travel so much for work, I take due diligence in a very serious way. I, I, I want high conviction because I make very large trades. So um, I was in a Dunkin' Donuts. I saw. Girl holding a coffee, had no clue who it was or why she was on the screen. Group of five girls behind me, buy the coffee she's holding. I asked the kids who they are. They say her name's Charlie the Dancing Girl. Charlie the Million. I learned later on, it's TikTok, what TikTok is, how big it is, how big her following is. I end up going to Dunks later that week after pulling some Google Analytics on it, following the trends, and made a boatload on that. Um, about a week ago, I live in New England, start hitting a couple different Dunkin' Donuts during the week. Uh, my wife drinks oat milk with her coffee. Everyone's out of oat milk. Next day, out of oat milk. Third day, fourth day. Today, um, I went to another one, and I said to the dude, I said, let me guess, no oat milk? And I said, do you have any empty bottles? And he didn't. It was you know that brand. I read the whole thing. I took a picture <laughs> of the back of it. Yeah. And I said, why can't you guys get oat milk? And why is it every single store within like a seven-city area? And he said, everybody's switching to oat milk. And now that's not complete due diligence, but that's where I start building my conviction into a position is I've now heard 10 stores within, you know, good 30, 40 miles. I do a lot of traveling. Um, so then when I was in Dallas this week for a couple of customer meetings, <clears throat> I visited a couple of dunks down there. I said, Hey, you seeing a lot of oat milk. And they said, we're starting to see it increase a little, but not a lot. And like, this is, this is the, what I preach all the time, whether it's the most advanced technology in the world or literally milking an oat somehow. Right. Mm -hmm. But like in all seriousness, like this is the level of granularity you need to be a good, strong investor, be able to act with conviction on real data that, by the way, no one else has. Because to your point, how many dudes who are my age are driving around to Dunkin' Donuts to ask, do you have oat milk and can I see the empty bottles? Mm -hmm. Like this is what it takes to really be a good, deep investor, drive real big returns year in, year out and have the conviction to place those. So I just want to share that because although I'm not an, oat, an Oatly uh, only I think you said it was called. Yep. Um, that's that's the level of like research you really got to get really got to get into. So, anyways, I just want to throw it out there as a good example. And two times in Dunkin' Donuts, they're going to make me a whole bunch of money. It looks like so. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll leave it at that. Free coffee for life. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, there's uh you know in, in the private stock group we have like these different chats and one of them is literally uh oatly pictures so in people people some people make fun of us and laugh at that but what we do is all the members of the private stock group everybody you know when they go to like a food store target whatever take a picture of, of oat you know like the oatly section and what we find is man it sells out fast like they'll stock it and then it's sold in for myself for reference um, for, for my family, I have three kids um, and, and obviously me and my wife, we're buying about seven containers a week. Those are $4.99 a pop. So now we are spending, you know, 30 to 40 bucks a week with Oatly for probably the rest of our lives. Maybe we swap to another brand in the future. You never know. But but like that's like a long term play there. Right. Where you get that recurring revenue where the people are coming in, buying that consistently day in and day out. So, um, but anyways, yeah, you know, I, I hope I kind of answered that, that question there. Um, as far as that, Chris, question. go ahead. Chris, you're, uh, yeah, we can't hear you. Jeremy, since you're in Vegas, I need, I need to know, what do you think of Dutch bros? Because I see crazy amounts of interest in people going nuts for Dutch bros. Like you could look at TikTok and just put in Dutch bros and you'll see like literally people driving miles or hours just to get their Dutch bros fixed. And it's literally only on the West Coast and there's just only started to expand out. And so I see Dutch bros one day getting to the scale of something like Starbucks. So that's why like me and my wife, we've been putting money in Dutch bros. I haven't personally been able to go. Like I did go to Vegas last time, but we forgot to go. But from everything that I read, it's like crazy growth for them. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. So the first time I ever went to a Dutch bros was probably, I think it was 2016. I went to one in Arizona. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it just had the hype, you know, super long lines, you know, to get in and whatnot. Great drinks, sugar, sugar, like crazy. You want diabetes, go to Dutch Bros, man. They, they, you know, whatever, imagine Starbucks on steroids, okay? Imagine a Starbucks Frappuccino, like a caramel ribbon crunch Frappuccino on steroids, man. That's Dutch Bros. But uh, yeah, and they make, they make some crazy drinks like the 9-11 when it's got like six shots of espresso and all types of stuff. But yeah, they got the hype and, and people love it. You know, we go to Dutch Bros, I would say at least once every two weeks 
probably, you know, when you kind of feel like treating yourself to something unhealthy. Right. Um, and so, yeah, you know, insanely busy. The, the one, I, I think there's kind of two issues around Dutch bros. I think one's maybe around valuation. The second is obviously you've got to build the locations and you've got to hire the employees and Dutch bros hires a very specific set of employees that are super outgoing that need a lot of training and whatnot. Cause they're supposed to be super social. Um, and so it's not, it's, it's not, I feel like there's other business models that are probably a little easier to like expand more rapidly than like that, that you've got to actually build the store. You got to get the permits. You got to, you know, that can be a year, two years, three years, you know, just to get a store and as somebody that used to work at quick trip, I know like how long that process can take. And so sometimes you can be held back just for the mere fact that, you, you know, you got to wait on the city to get this done. You got to wait on the state to get this done. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the one downside with the Dutch bros, but no doubt they're super busy. Every time I've ever gone to Dutch bros in my life, super busy. If you ever go to a Dutch bros and there's only like three cars in front of you, <laughs> that would be a rare experience. So um, I will say that.